To keep things simple, we're going to connect to ClickSense desktop so that we don't need to worry about authentication, which is preferable when first learning the Click APIs. To be able to connect, we need to load two resources from the Click ecosystem into our web application. A CSS file, which will ensure the Click visualizations look and behave the way that they do in the ClickSense client, and the Click require.js file. Although we only explicitly load a single JavaScript file, we'll end up with far more than that thanks to the configuration of require.js. While ClickSense Desktop is open and running, you can open the hub using a browser and going to this URL. To access the resources we need to connect to the capability APIs, we can use the same base URL and change the hub part to the location of the desired resource. The CSS file we're going to load resides at this location. To include it in our web application, we'll add a link element into the head and set the href and rel attributes like this. The require.js resource is a JavaScript file which can be found at this location. To include this in our project, we'll add a script element just before the closing body tag and set the source or src attribute like this. We'll put our own JavaScript code into a file called script.js, which will be a part of our web application structure and live in the same directory as the HTML page. To load it, we can add a script element and use a relative path in the source attribute. We're going to be accessing require.js variables in our code. Therefore, the order in which the scripts are loaded is important. We need to make sure that we load our script.js file after the require.js file. And now that we've loaded the appropriate resources into the page, we can start preparing our connection to click sense. And we'll start by configuring require.js and tell it where all of the click resources are. By loading the require.js file into the page, a global variable called require now exists. We need to call its config method and provide a single parameter, which should be an object. And the only required property we need to create is the base URL. This could be set dynamically, but we'll keep things simple for now and hard code the value. The next step is to use require.js to load the main capability APIs file, which will then trigger all of the other dependencies to load as well. To do this, We'll use the global require variable like a function, providing two parameters. Firstly, any modules we would like to load as an array of string values, and then a callback function to be executed when everything is ready. When requesting modules, require.js assumes the file is a JavaScript file, and we use the base property we've configured to find it. We therefore don't need to stipulate the file extension. The module js slash click will actually resolve to this entire URL. Once successfully loaded, the callback function is executed and passed an object that will alias click. This represents the root API, which contains the following functions. And we're now ready to connect to an app. You can stay up to date with all of our content by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on social media. If you'd like a more interactive learning experience, then head over to webz.academy, where you'll find our full set of training courses complete with hands-on activities and much more.